Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us for this Florida Keys and Key West broadcast. We have Sabine Chilton on the line and she's going to be giving us some more information about this great destination. Sabine, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, good morning, everyone. Actually, I should say good afternoon and uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on this presentation of the Florida Keys and Key West. Uh, my name is uh, Sabine Chilton, and I'm the International Sales Manager for the Florida Keys and Key West Tourism Office. Uh, before I start this presentation, I definitely would like to report to you that uh, today and for the remaining of the week, our air temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, and our water temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. And it's due to this wonderful climate that Key West was recently named the best winter location in the United States by the Farmer's Almanac. So on those great words, let's begin. The Florida Keys and Key West are a chain of 200 kilometers of islands that begin just south of Miami. The islands are linked together to the, and to the mainland of Florida by the US-1 Overseas Highway. The Overseas Highway from North Key Largo to Key West has been designated an All-American Road, one of the highest recognition under the National Scenic Byways Program. Just to give you an idea, there is only 30 roadways in the entire United States which have earned this prestigious award. You can reach the Florida Keys by air, sea, and land. By air, visitor can fly into Miami International Airport or Fort Lauderdale International Airport. From those two airports, you can also fly directly to Key West with American Eagle and United Silver Air. Marathon, which is in the heart of the Florida Keys, is also reachable via air charter services. By sea, for the visitors vacationing on the west coast of Florida, there is a daily service high-speed ferry from Fort Myers Beach and Marco Island to Key West. It takes about three and a half hours one way. We definitely recommend our visitors not to do the whole trip in one day. The best way to do it would be to take the ferry on a day, spend a few days in the Keys in Key West, and then take another ferry on the way back. By land, the Florida Keys actually begins an hour of the Miami International Airport. While driving down, you will go through 42 bridges over the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. The Florida Keys elected a very simple mile marker system. Key Largo begins at mile marker 110, and Key West is at mile marker zero. We actually have one of the very great destinations where your clients will definitely not need a GPS. The Florida Keys are actually divided in five main regions, which includes Key Largo, Isla Morada, Marathon, Big Pine Key, and, and the Lower Keys, as well as Key West. Each region, which I will describe in detail in just a moment, have their own special flavors and attractions. The first key is Key Largo. It's also the longest of the islands of the key chains. It gave its name to the famous movie starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. The main attractions of Key Largo is the John Pennycam Coral Reef State Park, which commemorated its 50th anniversary in 2010. It is the first and oldest underwater preserve in the United States. This marine sanctuary features about 55 varieties of corals and 500 different species of fish. It's a real paradise for snorkelers and divers who will descend on the iconic underwater Christ of the Abyss statue. The parks also offer glass bottom books excursion for people who don't want to get in the water. There is also some canoe, kayaking, and boat rentals, a beach, nature trail, a museum with a 120,000 liter aquarium, as well as 47 campsites. Key Largo is also the getaway to the Everglades National Park, where you will discover an unbelievable flora and fauna. The Everglades are home to a lot of endangered species like the manatees, the American crocodile, and the Florida panther. Outfitters in Key Largo will offer eco tours to the Everglades as well as kayak excursion for a few hours or even several days. 
And if you decide to drive to the Everglades, on-site outfitters will also offer airboat rides. Other attractions in Key Largo include eco-tours on hovercraft, sunset cruises on a river boat, diving the Spiegel Grove Wreck, fishing, the African Queen, which I will give you a lot more details later on, and the Dolphin Encounters. There are six different places offering dolphin programs in the Florida Keys. Three of them are located in Key Largo, Dolphin Plus, Dolphin Cove, and Island Care. One in Isla Morada, Theater of the Sea, where you can also swim with the sea lions and the sea grays, and two in Marathon at the Dolphin Research Center and Hawkskier Resort. There are very strict guidelines and reservation must be made in advance. On a personal note, I really enjoy having the dolphin giving me little kisses, but one of my favorite programs is the painting with the dolphins. Holding a white t-shirt and kneeling on a platform, the dolphin comes to you with a paintbrush in their mouth and start painting your shirt, Picasso style. Then a trainer writes the date and the name of the dolphin on your shirt and you get to take it away home. To me, that was one of my most favorite memories. Isla Morada, the second island, it's also the centerpiece of a group of those islands called Purple Isles. The Spanish explorers gave it this name because of the purple snail found on the seashore and the purple bougainville flowers. Known also as the sport fishing capital of the world, Isla Morada holds most fishing world records and has the largest fleet of offshore charters boats and backcountry boats. Anglers will find selfish, marlin, mahi-mahi, tuna, snappers, and groupers in the ocean, and tarpon, bonefish, and rayfish in the shallow coastal waters. Other attractions in Isla Morada include the Worldwide Sportsman, which is a bass pro shop where you will see a replica of the Ernest Hemingway boat, as well as a giant saltwater aquarium. They offer some very original gifts, a really nice closing line, and you will be able to buy all your souvenirs for all your friends and family who didn't get a chance to go on the trip with you. The diving aficionados will enjoy the diving museum, which has a collection of artifacts dating from the 1500s. If you get a chance, make sure you make a stop at Roby's Marina, where you will be able to feed the tarpon. You will buy a little bucket of fish for a dollar, and you will get to the dock, and there you will be able to feed those giant fish as well as the pelicans. Roby's Marina has also a great little restaurant serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you will eat outside on the dock. Personally, one of my favorite items on the menu, it's called the Purple Isle. It's actually crepes filled with lobster meat. It's fantastic. There is also an outdoor market where the local artists are selling some painting, some jewelry, and art crafts. There is also a fishing party boat, and you will be also able to rent some, um, some boats as well over there. Further down, we have Anne's Beach, which is a paradise for kiteboarding, but it's also a great place for family as they have some fantastic nature trails, shallow waters, and picnic tables. Arriving now in Marathon, Marathon is the heart of the Florida Keys. It's located exactly an hour south of Key Largo and an hour north of Key West. Marathon is home of the Seven Mile Bridge, which is 11 kilometers long. And if I can give you an advice, it's definitely rent a convertible. It's a wonderful, wonderful drive. Exploring Pigeon Key, which is right off the Seven Mile Bridge. It's once housed all the workers who built the Henry Flagler Railway in the, in the early 1900s. A little train will take you there via the old bridge and you will be to, able to spend some time on this beautiful island. Marathon is also home of the Crane Point Hammock and the Museum of the Natural History, the Dauphin Research Center, as well as a new cable park operated on a seven-acre lake, which is a great place to learn or practice wakeboarding and kiteboarding. In Marathon, we also have the Turtle Hospital, which is now open to the public, and where you will be able to interact and learn a lot about the sea turtles. The goals of this uh, hospital is to rehabilitate injured sea turtle and then to return them to their natural habitat. And if all those inventions definitely made you hungry, please 
stop at the Keys Fishery. It's a wonderful little restaurant. One of their um, excellent items is the lobster, lobster Reuben. This uh, little place is actually very casual with picnic tables right on the ocean. And uh, they do have a very funny way to uh, place your orders. Every day they elect a different theme, such as what is your favorite cartoon character or your favorite place to visit. And when your order is ready to be picked up, they will call on upon your answer. Big Pine Key and the Lower Keys are the most natural of all our keys. Home of the Lou Key National Marine Sanctuary, one of the most spectacular shallow water dive experience. You can also do some wonderful wreck diving at the Adolphus Bush uh, wreck dive. Baya Honda is actually also located in the, in the Big Pine Key and was named one of the top 10 natural beaches in the United States. This wonderful park offers pristine water where you will be able to swim with the magnificent background of the former Henry Flagler Railway. Over there, there is also some boat rentals, some kayaking, cabins, and campsites are also uh, part of the rental program. Other stops include the Old Bat Tower, which is actually very inorically never had any, any bats in it. A gentleman named Perky um, wanted to build a resort in the Florida Keys, and back then there was a lot of problem with the mosquitoes. So after doing some intense research, he found out that uh, bats actually love to eat mosquitoes, so he actually built this giant bat tower, except there is no bats in the Keys. So since 1982, the tower has just been an historic landmark. While in Big Pine Key, you will be able to take some wonderful nature tours in the Great White Heron National Refuge, as well as the National Key Deer Refuge. The key deers are actually a miniature little deer which only exists in this part of the world. There is about only 700 left. And while you're driving in this area, just be very careful because it's very common to see one of those little guys just crossing the road. After all this adventure, if you're hungry or thirsty, just make sure you make a stop at the No Name Pub, which is a local favorite water hole. Last but not least, Key West. You have all the ingredients there for a fabulous vacation. This is your final stop. You will be closer to Cuba than Miami, only 135 kilometers. This island, which is three kilometers by six kilometers, has always been in heaven for writers, artists, and musicians. Take a stroll along our main street called Duval Street, and which is filled with wonderful shops, art gallery, restaurants, and cafe. The historic seaport is also a great place to wander. Make sure you take your picture near the most southern point landmark of the United States. You will be able to use it at a later on day for your Christmas card and make everybody jealous. You can also um, visit uh, the, key, the Key West through bike tours or ghost tours. There is also some wonderful walking tours. For the others, you can also enjoy the town via the Kong train, the little trolley, which has hop up and off off um, different locations throughout the island, and more recently, since November, the duck tours, which will take you on tours on land and sea. Culture and history have always been a big part of the daily life in Key West. One of our most famous residents was Ernest Hemingway, and you can still visit his home and discover his six toe cats. Other museum in Key West includes the Custom House, the Lighthouse, the Shipwreck Museum, the Mel Fisher Museum, where you will be able to discover treasures from Spanish galleons like the Atosha, and close to nature, there is also the Butterfly Conservatory, which is a real wonder. Water sports are present everywhere in the Key West, and you will be able to do tours of Key West via jet ski. There is also some parasailing and other water adventure, as well as day and sunset cruises on catamarans and tall ships. Key West also offers some wild dolphin watch for the people who want to learn more about this mammal. One of the most beautiful day excursions is the Dry Tortugas National Park. 
you will reach the island either on a seaplane or with a new ferry called the Yankee Freedom 3. If you decide to do the excursion via the ferry, it includes your continental breakfast on board, drinks and lunch on the island, your snorkel gear, as well as the visit of the fort with the park rangers. After a whole day of fan, the ferry will bring you back to Key West just on time for sunset celebration. Every night, we commemorate the most beautiful sunset. It is a free event, and every everyone meets at Mallory Square for a great time. You have some junglers and acrobats, fire eaters, musicians, and all of them will display their talents and will entertain you while the sun sinks down below the horizon. Sunset cruises are also a wonderful way to relax and enjoy the beauty of the sunset. After that, it's time for cocktails, dinner, and nightlife. One of our most famous bars is Sloppy Joe's, where Ernest Hemingway used to hang out every night telling all his wonderful fishing stories with all his friends. There is also some great nightclubs and some cabaret where you'll see some fantastic drag, show, drag queen shows. The choices in Key West of restaurants are fantastic, as well as all the rest of the Florida Keys. You will be able to enjoy some wonderful cuisine made a lot of about the fresh local fish, Key West shrimp, our Florida lobster, and uh, our stone crab claws. There is a, a little story actually on how we harvest those claws. Um, while we um, fish the crab, we actually do not kill it. We catch it, then we harvest the claw, and then we release the crab back to the ocean, where actually the claw will be growing back throughout time and will be able to be harvested again on the next season. So it's definitely a nice way of uh, seeing nature at its best. To finish your meal, I will definitely recommend our signature dessert, which is our most famous key lime pie. Year-round, the Florida Keys also hosts the most unique festival. For example, in July, we have the Ernest Hemingway's Days with all the look-alike and ton of fun different events. And the Lower Keys hosts the Underwater Music Festival, which is very different and unusual, but also create an awareness for the protection of the coral reef. One of our most famous festivals is Fantasy Fest, which takes place every year at the end of October. As you can see, pictures are worth a thousand words, so I will leave it to your imagination. But you can just remember, there is no boundaries, and you can definitely leave all your fantasies there. Within the last year, new events and attractions have flourished throughout the Keys. For example, if you feel to compete with James Bond, there is the Jetpack Adventure, which you can do in Key Largo and Key West, and this would be definitely the adventure for you. In Key Largo, the African Queen is actually back on the water and will take you on a tour of the canal, and if you decide, we'll drop you off at the pilot house for a wonderful dinner. This is the actual boat that Humphrey Bogart skippered in the movie of the same name. For the first time this year, we will host the Bogart Festival May 2nd through the 5th. High Bay Beast Resort in Key West offers also for the first time night paddle boarding, which is a very unique way to discover the underwater beauty. One of our signature programs is actually called Volunteerism. It's a great way for visitors to give back to the community and participate in lifetime experience. For example, you can volunteer in an underwater coral farm where you will be able to help with the coral restoration. You can also participate to the release of the sea turtles after their rehabilitation or also help with the whales. All those programs are great, and you're definitely able to join all of them. To mention a few words on accommodations, our accommodations throughout the Keys are very are numerous and will satisfy any budget and any personal preferences. From independent hotels, resort chains, motels, bed and breakfast, guest houses, 
private island, campground, condos and villas rental. Basically, we have it all. You can find uh, this extensive list and all the details on our website, which is www.fla-keys.com. I strongly recommend that you do visit this website as it will answer most of your questions. There is also several web tabs who will be showing you all the different things going on in the Keys at all times. Also, for your help, I am only one phone call and one email away, so if you have any specific question. And uh, for those of you uh, which also work with the French-Canadian market, uh, we do have a French website, which is fla-keys.fr, and our general brochure is also public in French. And uh, FYI, I'm also fluent in French, so I can definitely help you with that as well. Well, um, this is what going to conclude my presentation. So I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you and your cl clients in our fabulous keys. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Jacqueline, um, I don't know if you have any questions for us. We do have some questions, Sabine. And thank you so much for such a great presentation. I especially liked the point about the harvesting of the claws and then yes. returning them. That was great. Yes, because I, I, I don't think a lot of people realize that. <laughs> mm, that's such an interesting thing to find out about. So we have a question from Brigitte. She just needs to be reminded where the painting is with the dolphins. Actually, you can do it at different places. I personally did it at the Dolphin Research Center, which is just outside of Marathon, uh, Mar Marker 61. It's, uh, it's a great place. It's one of our uh, most uh, fabulous places uh, where you can do this program. There is also um, some different, different programs available there as well where you can um, basically to um, swim with a dolphin, you have to be you know, a certain age and all this. But they also offer some fantastic programs such as the Dolphin Dip or the Dolphin Explorers. Um, for children. So this is also a nice way for them to be able to touch the dolphin, to play with them. And uh, you can get a lot more information on their website at www.dolphins.org. And oh, that's great. I hope that answered your question, Brigitte. We also have a question from Marie. She wrote, is there any all-inclusive hotels for the Key West for a week? No, unfortunately, no, we do not have any um, all-inclusive hotel in the Florida Keys. I'm sorry. But there is so many things to do here that, um, and dining options and attractions and everything that um, it's, you, you, it's, not, it's not really going to, to work out that way. Well, that's all right. Um, I, the question, uh, thanks for answering the question from Marie. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and thank you so much, Sabine, for being here. And I'm going to be sending out the presentation to all of the participants, and I'm going to be sending out the recorded webinar as well, so you can review everything Sabine uh, said here today. And thanks again. Have a great day. All right. Well, thank you so much to everyone, and thank you uh, for all your help, Jacqueline. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Thank you Sabine. so much. Bye-bye. Mm,